Hello students, in this video we'll discuss how to change the coordinates of a second order linear differential equation and see instances where this change of coordinates will help us solve a differential equation of a certain form. So let's consider our standard linear for our linear second order differential equation, y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus q of x, y is equal to zero, so that's a q of x, y, q of x, y. Equals zero homogeneous. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to these are these primes are x derivatives. So here y prime represents dy dx. Now I'm going to change coordinates. I'm going to introduce a y dot, and y dot is going to be dy dz. Okay, for a new variable z. So let's use the chain rule to figure out how y prime and y dot relate to each other. Okay. So what do we know about y prime? We know that y prime is dy dx, and dy dx is dy dz dz dx. So this is really what? This is really dz dx, dz dx, times what? Times y dot. Beautiful. Now, what's the second derivative? Let's use this version of the chain rule. What's y double prime? That's d squared y dx squared. That'll be what? That'll be d squared y dz squared times dz dx quantity squared plus dy dz by the product rule, dy dz and then d squared z dx squared. Great. And so now if we fill this into the differential equation, it becomes a little bit more messy. And so of course, what are these things over here? This is really a y double dot. And then I'm going to have a dz dx quantity squared plus y dot dz dx squared squared. Excellent. All right, so if we replace the, uh, all the y, double pro the y primes with the dots, what are we going to get? We will have what? We'll have y double dot. We'll have a d squared z. Uh, we'll have a d what? Not quite. Almost. We'll have a, so this y double prime term. I'm going to gather the like terms. It's going to be a dz dx quantity squared y double dot. Now let's look at the y, y dot term. So I'm going to have a y dot dzx squared. So I'm going to have a plus y dot and then a d squared z dx, uh, dx squared. Second derivative of that thing. And then I also have a what? I also have a p times y prime. So I'm going to have a p plus p of x times dz dx over here. Those are my y dot terms. And then I have what? Then I have a q and then a y, q of x, y is equal to zero. So I've changed the second order differential equation. Now, if I would like this, if I want this, this form may not may or may not be nice. However, in very special cases, we can we can figure out when I can change this to a nice differential equation. So if we're lucky, and if the ratio of q and dx dz dx squared is a constant, then we're in good shape. So our hope, one of our hopes or requirements, if if d z d x squared is a constant is a constant times q of x then there's a hope that this might turn into a constant coefficient differential equation so in other words if we make this special change of variables over here if i let z be a constant times the square root of whatever q of x is assuming we can do square roots of q of x if we make this change of variables, then that will take the, the second derivative term in the first in the function itself and have a constant ratio over here. So what do we really need? So if, if we let z be this and, well, let's figure out what these things are going to be then. So z is really what? dz dx is really this uh, over thing over here. It's really the square root of q, right? So dz dx is really q. So what we can have is this. I'm going to take this ratio over here and divide everything by dz dx squared, and then that will sort of simplify this into a 1 over c. So let's see what, what the condition will happen over here. So I also need this ratio and d squared z dx squared plus p of x dz dx over dz dx dz dx quantity squared, I would like this to be a constant, another constant C2. If that's a constant C2, then everything, every ratio over here could be reduced to a constant. So if these two conditions are satisfied, I can turn my problem into a constant coefficient differential equation. So let's see an example of how, when this would work over here. 
So here's an example of a problem where I can change the coordinates to make it look constant. So here's the example. If I look at y double prime plus tangent of x times y prime plus cosine squared of x, y is equal to zero. Well, cosine squared is playing the role of my q over here. So in other words, let's see what happens if I can change the coordinates like so. So let's introduce a new variable over here. Let's introduce the z variable. So I'm gonna introduce z is gonna be what? Just the constants times the integral of the square root of q, and the square root of q is just gonna be a cosine over here, dx. So the coordinate transformation we're gonna do is we're gonna say that z is equal to the sine of x, okay? Now, if z is equal to sine of x, let's look at this differential equation and see what's gonna become. So what is dz dx? dz dx is cosine. So this first term over here is gonna become a cosine squared of x, y double dot, plus y dot, times what? The second derivative of z, well, the derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine, so this becomes a negative sine of x, plus my p is what? My p is tangent, tangent of x, times dz dx, but dz dx is cosine, cosine of x, and then plus what? Plus q of x, and q of x we know is cosine squared. So cosine squared of y, cosine squared of x times y is equal to zero. So if I change the coordinates by saying that z is the sine of x, then I get this differential equation over here. Now the cool thing about this is that by my choice of differential equations, I know that cosine times tangent is equal to sine of x. So I have a sine of x over here and a negative sine of x over here. Those terms are gonna cancel. This is a cosine squared over here. This is a cosine squared over here. I'll divide by cosine squared and I can reduce my second order linear differential equation to y double dot plus y is equal to zero. We know the general solution of this, the general solution of y double dot plus y is equal to zero. Remember these are functions of z now. This is y is equal to c1 cosine of z plus c2 sine of z. And remember, we're solving the equation for x. I know the relationship between z and x. So what is z? z is the sine of x. So the general solution of our original problem is y is equal to c1 cosine of sine of x plus c2 sine of sine of x. And so by changing, the independent, by changing the independent variable from x to z in this problem and using the, using the assumption, making this correct change of coordinates in terms of x in terms of z to try to make the equation a constant coefficient equation, this condition turned out to be satisfied. And so since this equation was satisfied, we can change the coordinates into a problem that is constant coefficient. Solve the constant coefficient problem and then plug in the new variables to the solution of the constant coefficient problem. Thank you very much.